we have already had getting basically an island quality rendering happening in real time on these uh, GPUs. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's an interesting problem to solve because, I mean, truthfully, it takes 40 hours to render like, one of these things for a movie. Uh, and we're able to render it essentially in real time. So, uh, you know, this is essentially coming from many different factors. You know, the, the GPUs have been getting uh, you know, faster and faster. Uh, you know, the complexity of standards now rivals what you can do on the CPU. The VRAM sizes are big enough now. I mean, they're, they're really equivalent to what you can get on the CPU as well. And, you know, we've had to come up with, with essentially parallelized I mean, that's the right word, but the ways of rendering, doing ray tracing, global illumination, all these things in parallel to essentially capture uh, the quality that you want to see in a final offline render and do it in real time. And uh, that applies also to things like skin, subsurface scattering, and reflections and shadows. And, uh, you know, we, we essentially, on a DirectX 10 part, I mean, we can render, these are the uh, actual transformers models, uh, textures, but we can essentially render these in real time. And, you know, we started off very modestly with, um, with just using a, just doing a Pixar test, this was in 2005, where we just, you know, recreated global nation, ray trace reflections, all that stuff on very old hardware. Now we can essentially go all the way up to doing uh, ILM models. You know, with, with, with O2, and this is going back, uh, you know, many, many years even, I mean, we can essentially take a totally reflective object, render it with ray trace reflections, and uh, do it up to 20 bounces of light in real time. And this is, uh, you know, now you can do this much faster. But you know, that opens up to doing hard reflections, soft reflections, glossy illumination, you know, really that's sort of what gets us close to doing full globe illumination. And, uh, and, that, and this sort of ray tracing, you know, that work led to what we're showing with, uh, with this launch of uh, this, you know, the 4800 parts. We're actually ray tracing the entire scene. I mean, we're not doing, uh, we're not even using the, the vertex pipeline anymore. We're just rasterizing essentially voxels, and uh, the level of detail then becomes infinite, and that's something that is really interesting. I don't think it's been done since the old days of like Comanche, where they had you know trains voxel rendered on a CPU. So we're bringing that back, and uh, it's kind of cool. So these are the commercials that we did for uh, you know, for Paramount, and um, you know they they, they were. Um, I mean, I think, you know, frankly, this, their test was the art team <laughs> that we had doing it. I mean, they were really good and they were done really quickly. Um, but where all this, all this led was really interesting. I mean, basically, uh, let me skip ahead through these. Uh, so, you know, all of the work that we did with the commercials led us to working with the actual ILM assets. And, you know, it had two purposes. One was Paramount wanted to get high-res renders that could be done very quickly and uh, and use, you know, because ILM, you know, those renders would take about you know, five hours at the, at the minimum. And, you know, here we were turning around this stuff in, in, in really quickly. So, you know, this is basically showing Optimus Prime loaded in our engine in real time. And, uh, you know, ILM didn't give it to us with any of the shaders or any of the rigging, so the artists, uh, our team in 3D Studio Max, essentially did all the rigging, they applied all the textures and, uh, and lighting. Uh, and this is basically, these, are, these frames are post-processed. This is real time. Um, and this is 8K by 8K. The monitor resolution isn't high enough to show it. It's fully, uh, it's fully rendered in real time at, at 64 megapixels. Uh, it's also real time. This is also real time running on a low end card where we're we have about you know, under 512 megs of RAM, but the texture set is about 10 gig, 10 gigabytes, and we're streaming that in, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is uh, an offline animation that we did, but it shows essentially just from the art pipeline perspective, it shows the rigging that the artist did to get it to look absolutely perfect. This is another rigging test uh, that actually I don't think it's ever released, but. Um, you know, it basically shows that, you know, you don't actually, I mean, you can essentially animate these, these really heavy models without any sort of, uh, you know, specialized uh, proprietary uh, rigging tools. And this is all just done in, in, uh, in Mac.